This video describes three ways by which chaff might be ineffective against the seeker of a modern radar-guided anti-ship missile. This is important because these methods can allow the missile to ignore the chaff cloud and home on the ship. So here's a 30 second summary of this video in four points. The details follow. Point one. Chaff is an offboard angle deception countermeasure against radar homing missiles. A small rocket is launched from the ship. It explodes into a big cloud of fine metal wires, which reflect the seeker's signal, uh, and hopefully attracting it away from the ship. Point two. This is important because angle countermeasures are the backbone of electronic countermeasures for defense of anything against a missile attack. Since if you can't get the missile heading in the wrong direction, the countermeasure can't prevent the missile from hitting the target. Point three. There are tests that the seeker of, of a modern missile can apply to distinguish between chaff, cloud, and a true target. Point four. Three methods are illustrated in this video. The first uh, instance, the, the echo from the chaff cloud may have different polarization characteristics than the ship skin echo. In the second case, the scintillation or amplitude fluctuation of the chaff echo will be different than the scintillation of the ship. And thirdly, the chaff is expected to have a different range depth profile than a ship, or any target really. So here are the details. But the details need to start with two preface points. Okay, preface point one, the engage simulation application. The graphics and video clips for each of the chaff discriminant types shown in this video were generated by Engage, which is a missile engagement simulation application written by Sky Industries over the last 22 years in order to develop something called the Invicta Cognitive Missile Engagement Controller. There's a link to the video description of both Engage and Invicta in the video description. Now, full disclosure, I don't have any data, real-world data, but the skin echo characteristics of a chaff cloud, since those would almost certainly be classified. That said, Engage has a long history of successfully predicting effects before they're observed in field trials. Uh, this is because pretty much everything in Engage is calculated from first principles of physics and electromagnetics, including an electromagnetics-based model of about nine different seeker antennas and their radomes. I can say this, though. If a chaff cloud can be adequately represented by, let's say, 30 discrete ref reflecting points whose positions change randomly within the volume of the cloud, then the results shown here are correct for the purposes of this video. And for reference, as a rule of thumb, 10 ref re reflecting points is generally adequate to represent a ship. This is what it looks like. Here's a polar plot of a ship as the number of reflectors goes from 1 to 20. You don't see much change past about 10 or possibly even fewer. Preface point two, the importance of range cells. Radar cross-section graphs shown in this video apply when the chip and the chaff cloud are in different range seeker range cells. So only one at a time is processed by the seeker. This means that the radar cross-section graphs shown in this video teach us about chaff discrimination for an isolated chaff cloud or for an isolated ship, not when the seeker sees both at the same time. Now, a separate video will treat the case of chaff discrimination when the ship and the chaff cloud are in the same range cell or overlapping range cells for different angular separations between the cloud and the ship. So here we go with chaff. Fire a rocket, it explodes, it makes a chaff cloud of ultra-fine uh, metal wires that reflect the radar pulses and hopefully the missile is either distracted or seduced away from the ship by that cloud. The trouble is missile designers have thought of this too. They have discovered that radar echoes from chaff, uh, from a chaff cloud, do not look like radar echoes from a ship, and they put those smarts into their missiles. Now, there are a few ways a seeker can tell the difference between a chaff cloud and a real ship. For example, uh, the radar echo from a chaff cloud, uh, and clouds and ships have different scintillation spectra. Scintillation spectra means the frequency components of the echo's amplitude variation. So, expect a modern seeker to measure the spectrum of the return of an echo and compare it with what it knows a ship looks like. And if they don't match, the seeker is looking at a chaff cloud. The seeker might also check the angular width uh, and the range depth of the suspected target, a candidate target. Chaff clouds have bigger angular extent than a ship, uh, and they certainly have a different range depth profile. 
Also, if the seeker is able to separately measure the copolar and crosspolar components of the skin echo, or a suspected skin echo, uh, then it might use this to distinguish a chaff cloud from a ship. Uh, if the seeker is, for example, vertically polarized, then most of the echo from the ship will be vertically polarized, but a chaff cloud, the echo from a chaff cloud, might have more of an even mixture of vertical and horizontal polarization since the chaff wire is going to fall in a random orientation. Now what happens after a chaff cloud is, was detected? I expect a modern seeker to use its memory to revert to the, you know, the range and angle where it thinks it last saw the ship. Or it might uh, uh, conduct a limited volume search for the ship, which is probably nearby, likely using a near to far and far to near range search with different search ambits and gate widths. And, and once it finds something, it will again apply the chaff discriminator to confirm that it's got the ship this time. And this concludes a brief look at how chaff might be ineffective against a modern radar homing missile.